In this video, we're going to explore a really interesting website type, which is called Freeform Canvas Website. On these type of websites, we can basically click and drag to navigate on this Freeform Canvas. And we also have a bunch of layers, uh, images or cards on this canvas that are also draggable. So it is a really like interactive way to present your work. Maybe if you have like images or different, you know, UI shots. And the crazy thing is that you don't need to know how to write code in order to create something like this. We're going to use Framer for this, which is a absolutely killer no code website builder. And yeah, my name is Nandi. This is Framer University and let's get started. So here we are in Framer and uh, the first thing I want to say is that I'm going to have a remix link in the description. So if you click that link, you're, you can duplicate this project into your Framer account for completely free. And you're going to find uh, this pages section here on the left panel. And if you click the starter page, you're going to basically see what I'm seeing right here. So you can start building with me. And by the end of this video, you're going to have your freeform canvas website, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to go to this tutorial page because I'm going to work here. And so let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this basic setup that we have right here, because I already prepared some of the things that we need. So first of all, we have this desktop breakpoint. We also have the tablet and the phone, but we're going to care about those later. And so within this desktop breakpoint, we have this main stack, which is set to fill width and 100 VH height. The 100 VH height is basically making sure that it always takes up 100% of the given viewport. So as you can see, if I am changing this viewport height, that main frame is also changing with it. So basically that's all we have. We have this main frame within the desktop breakpoint and we're gonna place elements within this. So first of all, I'm gonna hit F on my keyboard and then draw on this canvas. And now as you can see, if we take a look at the layers panel, we have this frame placed within the main stack right now, which is perfect. So what I wanna do with this frame is I wanna rename it to drag canvas because this will be the canvas that we are going to be dragging around. So this will be a really, really large frame. So I'm just making it larger here, as you can see. Here on the right panel, I can also specify the width in uh, pixels. So we're gonna do that. It's gonna be 3000 width and 3000 height. So now we basically have this base and we can start putting elements within this canvas. So as you can see, I already prepared some of these elements that we're gonna need here. But first of all, we're gonna just add a text layer. So I'm gonna just create it right here. I'm gonna write free form canvas website and we're gonna center it. We're gonna increase the size to maybe 122. And then I'm gonna also change the color to white, maybe decrease the line height a little bit and then the letter spacing as well. It's gonna be instrument serif. And yeah, I think that's gonna be it. I'm gonna just command an X here and then paste it within the drag canvas. So now, as you can see, it is not in the view. What I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to press option H and option V on my keyboard. This will nicely center it here within our drag canvas. Maybe we can make this a little bit smaller. And yeah, now we have this text here. I can also change the website to italic and then a little bit transparent color. So now we have this text. The next element that we're going to add is a grid background. If you take a look at this website here, you can see that we have this nice grid in the background. So let's create that. So for that, of course, we're gonna need a frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come here, draw a frame, command an X, and then paste it within the drag canvas. So let's rename this to background and then make sure that 
it doesn't have this fill color. I'm just gonna check that. Okay, so it is now above the text, which is not great. So let's reorder these. Now it is behind. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that these pins right here is activated on all sides and are set to zero. This will make sure that it will always take up the available space within its parent, which is the drag canvas. So now we somehow might have to make sure that this background is actually a grid and not just a solid color. So we're gonna go to the image and we're gonna upload an SVG here. So I'm gonna just go to Figma and I already prepared this pattern. You can create your own, but if you don't wanna do that, I also included this BG right here. So you can just copy and paste from there. So let's just go to this BG and as I said, upload that SVG that we created in Figma for the pattern. Okay, so here it is. I'm just gonna upload it. And now as you can see, it is right here, but we cannot see it. We have to set the type to tile. So as you can see, it will be just um, you know, duplicated in the background multiple times. So now we have this perfect grid background. We can change the opacity to 0.1 and we now basically have this, uh, which looks really great. However, we somehow have to make sure that we can grab this drag canvas and we can actually drag it around because now I'm just clicking and nothing happens. So it is super easy to do that in Framer. We are just gonna select the track canvas and then we're gonna go to the right panel, effects, and then we're gonna add drag. Basically that's it. Here I'm gonna turn off snap back because we are not gonna need that. And as you can see now, I can just drag it around. Very simple, right? However, what we notice is that we can basically drag it outside of the viewport and uh, this is not really what we want. I want to make sure that after a certain point, we cannot drag further. So there are certain boundaries. So the way we can do that is we can go to this main section because this is the wrapper of the drag canvas and then we can add a scroll section to it. So I'm gonna press scroll section and we're gonna call this container and then we're gonna go back to the drag canvas and to this drag effect and we can turn off the freeform. So now we are defining the container here that will basically act as the boundaries of this drag effect. So now as you can see, I cannot drag it further than that. So it is perfectly what we needed. And now all you have to do is to add all of these images and all these layers within the drag canvas. So let's do that. So I can just copy all of these. I'm gonna just select all of them, then Command and X, and then within the drag canvas, I'm gonna press Command and V, and now they are pasted in somewhere. I have to move them right here to the center. So it is perfect. And so now we can reposition all of these cards so they are exactly where we want them to be. So I'm gonna just slightly tweak the positionings here. And so now what we can do is we can make sure that somehow we can also drag these cards here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of them here on the layers panel. Then I'm going to just add a border to them. It's going to be a white border, maybe 10% transparency. Then we're going to add the slide drop shadow. It's going to be four on the Y, eight on the blur. And then I think this 25% looks great. And so now what we can do is we can actually add the drag effect to these as well. So effects, drag, and here we also disable snapback. So now what we have is basically draggable cards. But as you can see on the finished design, what we have is a little bit different effect. Since as I start dragging these around, they are animated. They are elevated a little bit from the canvas and it looks better. Also the drop shadow changes. So how we can do that? We can basically go and add some other effects as well to this. So first of all, again, select all the cards, add a hover effect as well. It's going to be a slight scale up effect. 
And then we're gonna also change the drop shadow a little bit here. So maybe 10 Y and 20 blur. And then we're gonna add a press effect, which is activating when we are pressing down on this. So basically when we are dragging it. So it's gonna be a 1.1 scale. And uh, we're gonna also tweak the drop shadow here. It's gonna be 20 Y, 40 blur, and then maybe 50 on the color. And so now if you take a look at this, we have the nice hover effect. And then when we drag, we also have that scale up effect. However, what I forgot is that we can also add a little rotation when we press down on these. So we can add a rotation. And so as you can see, when we drag down, they are rotated to the right slightly. So now we have this draggable canvas and the elements within are also draggable. Of course, for example, the text layer is not draggable, but we could also make that draggable if we wanted to. What else do we have to do? We can, you know, spice this up a little bit by adding some additional layers like this little helper that says drag to move. So I'm gonna come in an X here, then paste it in right there. Press option H, option V to center it and then we can move it down a little bit. Then we're gonna also select this image, paste it within the canvas, position it to the center here. And then we're gonna also add this last element. And then basically we have everything within the canvas. And yeah, it looks really nice. Okay, so as you can see, we have this druggable canvas now these druggable elements, but you could ask Nandi, how do I make this responsive? Because if I open this on my phone, this is what I see, which is not really great. So let's take a look at how we can optimize something like this in Framer. It is really simple again, like everything in Framer is simple. We could, we just have to go to that specific break point that we're gonna optimize, and we just have to change a couple of things. So first of all, we can make this sticky note a little bit smaller. Then we can select the text. We can change that to a smaller size as well. We can drag this drag to move a little bit to the top. And then we can just, you know, change the positionings of these cards as well around. So I'm just pressing my arrow keys to move it here within the viewport. And maybe I can also make these cards a little bit smaller. So yeah, you just have to make sure that you reposition all of your cards so they are within the viewport on mobile as well. Okay, so now as you can see here on the mobile breakpoint, we have a completely optimized design. And so basically we are done. So just to recap what we did here, we created a huge frame within our main desktop breakpoint. And to make it draggable, we just added the drag effect to it which is really simple in Framer, basically just two clicks. And then all of the elements that we added within this drag canvas also became, you know, draggable as we moved this drag canvas around on our website. And then if we wanted to add some additional draggability to <laughs> further elements within that frame, we could also add drag effects to those elements. Check out framer.university for other remixes and tutorials just like this. I usually recreate breathtaking animations and components in Framer without writing a single line of code to teach people how they can create stunning websites without writing a single line of code. Make sure to comment Canvas in the description if you watched the video so far. And yeah, like this video, subscribe for more, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.